The New York Jets are all about misery. There is nothing more consistent over the past five years than seeing the butt fumble fail in nearly every conceivable way. While the front office and coaching staff may seem competent in trying to build a new foundation, the gods will find a way to ruin everything. Zach Wilson is going to get thrown into the fire, just like Darnold did before him. But unlike with Mono Man, Wilson's going to hopefully have support. Just don't ask it for the defensive side of the ball. Carl Lawson was a key free agent signing for them, wasn't he? <coughs> How about enjoying a sequel to CJ Mosley's tenure? Signed Jared Davis too, right? Well, he's out long term. He might be able to come back unlike Vinny Curry. It's gotten so bad that Shaq Lawson was acquired for emergency death. Jets, it might be one of those years for you. Again. The AFC seems to be top heavy again, but there's a ton of competition in the middle. And that's where the intrigue will come into play. The divisions seem relatively cut and dry. Buffalo wins the AFC East, Cleveland gets the AFC North, Tennessee claims the AFC South, and Kansas City locks up the AFC West. But for wild cards, there's an argument to be made for many teams. For the three I'm choosing, I'm going with Baltimore, Miami, and the Chargers. It was very tough to pick anyone who stands out in that regard. So I'm hoping for a really exciting AFC this season. I have a gut feeling another 10-win team isn't going to make the playoffs again. The only thing that's scarier than the prospect of the New York Jets ruining another top draft pick is witnessing whatever the fuck this CGI atrocity is. I feel like I've OD'd and this is the Reaper that's going to remove me from the bane of existence. That amalgamation can also be considered as the Jets' offensive line. Zach Wilson is going to die this season. He'll be eating all of his solids out of a straw by December for how often he was running for his life. Carolina didn't need to do much, but it was no contest. Sam Darnold gets his revenge against the team that ruined him. A hollow gesture, but he'll take what he can get. Anything to prove the doubters wrong. Zach Wilson, you poor bastard. You thought the NFL was going to allow you the opportunity to compete. Your skills were going to shine. Guess what? The only highlight is going to be how you survive. Bill Belichick enjoys playing young QBs so much you could call him a pedophile. Anything the Jets did on offense would be snuffed out by the Patriots. Four interceptions for Wilson on the day, two of them on his first two passes. You could see the man's confidence get destroyed in real time as New England gets pissy that their offense can't do much of anything. This should have honestly been uglier. A great tradition of beating the Jets continues. And now Wilson is probably seeing ghosts. I wonder how Darnold's doing in greener pastures. You know how easy it is to write shit about the New York Jets? No matter the personnel or player changes, they will always find incredible ways to butt fumble it all. I could just copy paste all the shit I said over the past few weeks about them and it would be just as accurate as it was then. This team is terrible. Even 12 year olds are shitting on them nowadays. And I'm hearing all the Jets fans in the distance. You're getting lazy, Tree. Get better material. Here's an idea, folks. How about the Jets get better material? It's been the same shit with this organization for over half a decade now. Denver now becomes the most undeserving 3-0 team in the league because they played the equivalent of journalist mode in a video game. Oh, wow, you beat the mistakes in East Rutherford and Jacksonville. So impressive. Wake me when you win a legit game. The New York Jets. Whenever you think you can't laugh at them any further, you'd be right. There is another team that will somehow shit the bed even worse than they do. Today, that is the Tennessee Titans. I like to say that teams play down to competition when they are poor against opponents they should be crushing. That isn't correct here. It's far more laughable than that. There is bad play and then there is whatever the blue hell the Titans are doing. Tennessee will have endless chances to allow Lil Jets to reign supreme, but they seem to have been visited by the spirit of Bud Adams. He meddled in his team's affairs to fuck every single thing up whenever they could do something. The red zone is now a chastity belt. They cannot break it. It's ironic since, holy shit, Zach Wilson was allowed out of the torture chamber today. It's cute when he's not trapped in an Iron Maiden for four quarters. You want to know how pathetic this game was? The Jets had a lead. For the first time this entire season. I have some questions, Titans. How did you win football games against far superior opponents? Why did you look past a team at this level? Am I supposed to seal clap for tying the game up? You'd be lucky to get a goddamn golf clap! Now we've come to this. The game is not only in overtime, but is hijacking the broadcasts of other, far more important games. The Jets kick a field goal, forcing the serve to Tennessee to choke everything once again. Thousands of Yinzers and Cheeseheads demand blood for this insult. This game won't end. Fuck you, man tits. 
I hope you fucking miss this field goal. Serves you right for this puke showing. On its way and he missed it! Missed it wide! <laughs> You suck so goddamn much! <laughs> and you blow it! <laughs> the NFL wants to grow the game abroad, yet they outsource shit like this overseas. London is to the NFL what Mexico is to NAFTA. They take the menial jobs Americans apparently don't want. Why do you think they send the Jaguars over there every year? We saved Britain's ass in World War II. And they get to relive that hell by watching the New York Jets play football. I have an inkling that even Tottenham Hotspur could beat the Jets. They were as bad as London Smog. Brits are fans of dark humor, but this may be too morbid for even those chaps to handle. Atlanta looked like they were back in their Millennium Falcon days. Kyle Pitts was finally a god. And then they nearly went back to their choking days, but apparently English misery transcends that shit. The end result is a Falcon win and mindless consumption from the poor bastards that showed money for this. Hey, you Brits chuck James Gordon and John Oliver on us, you can suffer through the Jets and Jags. <laughs> this week's festivities coincide with National Tight Ends Day. And we all know Belichick loves his tight ends, particularly the young quarterbacks on opposing teams. With his cunning and brute force, he will turn them all into wide receivers. The New York Jets are the poor girl on the street corner. They're just fucked. Doesn't matter by how or who. It's pure raw dogging by some sick fuck hanging out by a park bench drinking out of a paper bag. All for a few measly cents to hopefully have a place to sleep for the night. It's a tragic existence, but it's their own damn fault for it. Years of self-destructive behavior have made the Jets into the Jets. No matter what they get their hands on, they will ruin. And this includes Zach Wilson. Their first great success in years. Setting the land speed record for killing a top prospect. I knew Wilson was a dead man walking here, but it's not even November! How the hell did they do that? Another victim of Belichick's human trafficking scheme at Foxborough. Can someone find emails of Woody Johnson saying Roger Goodell's a bitch? It's the only way he's gonna be forced to leave. Perfect opportunity to pad their impressive record on the season. The Cincinnati Bengals headed into New Jersey's biggest mistake to play the Jets. Starting a practice squad journeyman named Mike White you can argue as a computer-generated player to fill the roster. But things didn't feel right from the start. Mike White was balling out as if he had all the hype of Zach Wilson, slinging the ball effortlessly, hideously exposing the Bengals' defense. If his receivers could catch something, the Jets would be blowing the gates open on this game, but we have to remember that these are the New York Jets. Nothing ever comes easy for them. Since he's doing everything in their power to keep them in it, though, Failures to break through a battered Jets defense are making this very, very uncomfortable for them. The fourth quarter, the Bengals have an 11-point lead, so you would think that'd be more than enough to put this game away, right? This wouldn't be the first time I was mistaken, and I think we got off on the wrong foot. Allow me to introduce you to Mike Goddamn White, savior of the Jets and recently crowned King of New York. Cincinnati will bow to his legendary power. Over 400 yards of passing in his first NFL start. He has rewarded them for giving him this chance. The blessing of a one-score game from the new god of the Meadowlands. Now all we need is some divine intervention. They had lost five consecutive games and the Jets are coming out playing. Oh, oh, it was picked up! Oh my god, the bungles are bungling in a way I never expected. Not the brutal turnover part, but in this fashion? You know the golden rule, bungles. Never give the ball back to Mike White. White, to the end zone, they got the lead! Mike fucking White. What a legendary performance for a team that needed it. Since he may have blown their drive, but all they need is a defensive stop. What could potentially ruin such a great game, you might ask? Untimely ref ball. How in the actual fuck is this penalty on the defense? The Jets player lowered his helmet on the play. You are gonna end the game on that bullshit? After all the gutsy, determined play? unbe fucking leaveable The New York Jets beat the goddamn Bungles with a touch of heinous ref ball and white power. And that's probably gonna get me cancelled. This may be a foolish pipe dream, but we are entering a new age for the New York Jets. The long-awaited savior is here, and his name is Mike fucking White. 
This is what I would be saying if the Jets were allowed to have anything good in this world. They are too poor to afford such nope. luxuries. Mike White was taken out of the game early because the football gods are dicks who hate anything fun. This includes anything resembling competitive sports. The Indianapolis Colts are really good at dominating against terrible competition and having people pretend that they're contenders. They did that just by letting Jonathan Taylor out to stud in the field. Endless running and siring of the Jets defense all night long. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't Robert Sala's area of expertise supposed to be defense? Why is his unit giving up 45 points and over 500 yards to teams? I don't care that Josh Johnson scored a bunch of points in garbage time in a Chief Scorigami. I wanted to see Mike White, not this shit! The Jets may be terrible, but glimmers of hope are rising at MetLife. And his name is Mike Goddamn White. He said he should have been the first overall pick in the draft. And he was the first overall pick in our hearts. For about two weeks. Welcome back to the cold reality of irrelevance, Mike. The Buffalo Bills defense will ensure that any hype surrounding your name is gone forevermore. It was a beautiful stretch, but four ugly picks dampened the mood on any situation. The Bills had their own humiliation to avenge. And they did it in a fine AFC East tradition. Picking on the slow fat kid named the Jets. Nobody gives a fuck about them. And they apparently deserve nothing nice. See this shiny new quarterback? Well, he's gone. You get the old shiny new quarterback you had before. Farewell, you legendary meme. Mike White's body will remain, but I will somehow accidentally keep calling him Matt. The Jets know that tank bowls need to be special occasions. The fans may want to see if Mike White can bounce back after a terrible game, but there is no need. This event needs a master of ceremonies. That man's name is Joe Flacco. Who cares about figuring out what we need for the future? New York needs to win football games, the executives will cry. But I know why you started the master of the checkdown. It's for that wonderful tank. Miami doesn't have their pick this year and you wanted to do them a solid? That's relatively noble of you, thinking long-range game by losing to the Dolphins in a game that just... existed. Besides a really solid performance from Tua, there was nothing all that notable about it. Ask anyone on the streets of New York about this match and you'll just get puzzled looks on their faces. It was a contest that was only played to fulfill TV contract obligations. Maybe for Miami to believe they have a chance of sneaking into the playoffs? Possibly? Certainly nothing that the Jets would want to remember. Festivities of Tank Bull are always a wonderful time. So many traditions. The New York Jets. Zach Wilson returning from the dead to die again. Tyrod Taylor. Sparrow Ditas on the call. It's a dream tank off as one can imagine it to be. My only regret was that it wasn't at MetLife Stadium where all great tank bulls are played. Things were looking quite perilous for the Jets at first. Too many unforced errors. Too often did the defense fall apart. But they have a few things that Houston lacks. They have resolve. They have determination. They have a defense that rebounded to form. And they also don't have a really good reason to tank for a top draft pick. It'd be nice for them to get a Thibodeau or Hutchinson for the defense, but it's not super important. The Jets show us by the end of the game a truth. That the Texans suck. Such a scorching take, I know. Houston gains ground in the relentless tank for... something? What do they need besides everything in the offseason? Eagles fans rejoice. You have your new backup quarterback to hail as the next great savior of Philadelphia. Jalen Hurts. Literally. His ankle has him out of this game against the Jets, which brings us to the debut of a fantastic folk legend. The tall tales out of Duval had him wrestle alligators and shotgun PBR all before leading a comeback drive in the fourth quarter. Gardner Minshew the second. Gaze at his mustache and you will be all in on his performance. The New York Jets might be in a winning mood against a team reeling off a brutal loss, but there are two Eagle seasons in my mind. Before Gardner and after Gardner. He is greatness personified. And the Jets offense, despite their potency early on, will not be enough to overcome the might of Minshew. Thanks to his efforts, the Eagles will win relatively easily, despite it being a soft opponent. And would you look at that. The NFC is so wide open that they're only a half game back from a wildcard spot. You know what to do. 
start Gardner Minshew. I'll make this easy for you. Jalen Hurts does not have a glorious mustache. Do it, Philly. With both of their division rivals breathing down their neck, New Orleans is feeling the pressure. To have any chance of their fleeting playoff hopes staying alive, they must win against the pushovers. Speaking of which, the New York Jets. They play hard. They try to win, but the Saints are finally getting much needed reinforcement. Alvin Kamara's back from injury, among others. It's desperately needed, especially as they're stuck with Taysom Football as their starting QB for the foreseeable future. Fortunately for them, it's enough to get it done. If it's a stroke of good luck or what, the Saints defense hasn't been overly destroyed by injury, so they're able to effectively squash whatever attack the Jets have. A crucial win was earned to stop the bleeding for now. In a rite of passage, Zach Wilson is undergoing the traditions that Sam Darnold did before him and Geno Smith before Darnold. The Phi Kappa Jet initiation of ruining quarterbacks. Them being good or not doesn't matter. Those massive injuries New York suffered before the season were a harbinger of what was to come. Can you call these kinds of seasons butt fumbles when they keep happening over and over? New York Jets eliminated. We can all agree this year has been insanely fucked for the NFL. Most games like the last one we recap feel like they're on some kind of drug cocktail. It's exhausting to follow this league some weeks. The only benefit is in memes fresh out of the oven. You thought it couldn't get worse. An old friend has re-emerged onto the scene. Corona Chen is back from her lengthy vacation and wreaking havoc on every sports league throughout America. The NFL has felt her wrath hard. You may have noticed all the coughing last week. It was for good reason. Over 150 <coughs> cases in the league over a five-day span. It's not Pokemon to catch. Coronavirus is running a train throughout multiple organizations. Cleveland and the Rams have over 25 players in COVID protocol. Washington has over 20. Other teams like the Bears, Texans, and Lions are getting wrecked as well. Eight teams are in enhanced COVID protocols. This is the worst case scenario we were fearing last season. And we're seeing it happen in front of our eyes. The NFLPA pleaded with the league for games to be postponed, but of course they waited until the last moment. In a shocker, the Shield cared more about game integrity than cold hard cash. The Saturday Browns and Raiders tilt has been pushed to Monday. Seahawks vs. Rams and Reskins vs. Eagles have been rescheduled for Tuesday. We have it again in doubleheader form, boys! Tuesday Night Football! Any chance we can get a Wednesday night game? For all the glorious memes? It was looking really goddamn suspicious for the Dolphins a few months ago. A team expected to be a dark horse for playoff contention outright craters to a 1-7 record? Nearly trading for Deshaun Watson despite everything telling them not to? I was wondering if we had jumped the gun on how well they were rebuilding. To be frank, I don't know what it was, but it felt like something finally clicked. Miami, despite all they've done to sabotage themselves, have roared back to playoff contention. This game against the New York Jets wasn't really a win as it was a microcosm of their season. Things were looking quite ugly at first. A multi-score deficit in a game they needed to win? Yet they don't give up. They keep finding ways to grind at a scrappy Jets team to get back into the game and take the lead. Miami keeps making mistakes, but they don't break due to them. This includes a poorly thrown pick six that is every Dolphins fan begging for Deshaun. The old Dolphins would have crumbled. This Miami team has resolved. They rebound from the shitty play and regain the lead with a touchdown. The good news is that it's enough to escape with a win. The defense climbs down and does the rest. Congratulations, Dolphins. You've successfully salvaged your season. The Saints, Titans, and Patriots all need to be beaten if you want a playoff berth. It's near impossible, but never say never. If you did, you'd have given up weeks ago. This next match is far more important than anything else happening this week. A duel of shit to bring the true victor a prize perhaps greater than victory. That's right, my friends. The Jaguars and Jets. Both franchises expected to be heavy favorites in the 2021 Tank Bowl standings will potentially settle the great question of our times. Who will secure the first overall pick in the draft? The top two prizes of last year's Tank Offs are fighting to forge their own legacies, but have struggled immensely for varying reasons. I may worry that both are being ruined, but Zach Wilson flashes the talent that earned him the right to be a top draft pick. Incredible running performances against a weakened Jacksonville unit, to be fair, are giving Jets fans a reason to hope for something greater. 
So many plays worthy of Tank Bull that the only way to properly call it is with Sparrow Dennis. Both teams are moving the ball differently. The Jets exposing Jacksonville's weak run defense and special teams. And the Jags picking apart New York's JV secondary. We have an intriguing contest headed down to the wire. There isn't a clear-cut top draft pick this year, so no real reason to tank hard. Barring a desire to blow everything up, but both teams did so already. New York has a clear chance to finish Jacksonville off at their goal line. But they cannot penetrate their weakened defenses in time. It's still a one-score game. Now we can begin the legend of Trevor Lawrence. He hasn't had an elite comeback drive in the NFL yet, but there's a first time for everything. Look at how Jacksonville charges towards the goal line and see the future for yourself. They're down to the Jets one and a win is so close to their grasp. All they have to do is take it. Fourth and goal. Here they come, Lawrence to the end zone. Even if they did somehow make it, it would have been an illegal shift and five yard penalty. Figures Jacksonville fucks it up in the end, but take comfort. Consecutive Tank Bowl championships are in your grasp. All you have to do is lose to the Patriots and Colts and the first overall pick is yours. Tom Brady's coming to his second home. One of his favorite pastimes has been walking into MetLife and defecating at midfield. Think Aaron Rodgers owns Chicago? Tom Brady could run for governor of New York and have a good chance of winning. Tampa Bay should be woken up sometime soon. They're looking pretty damn sluggish to start. Is beating their opponent really this hard to do? All the Jets have is a young roster and 10,000 reasons to play hard for a new contract. It's not like they have much of anything else, but I will give them credit. They're playing quality football. New York's doing what they need to do to win. Well, they're even up by 14 in the second half. All they have to do is finish them off and they'll be American heroes. I hate to inform you that we all bet on the wrong horse. The Buccaneers, like many times in Tom Brady's career, chip away at that allegedly insurmountable lead to make it more manageable. We can talk about how the Jets are charging forward, about how they can seal the deal, but narratives don't exist without evidence. What the hell do you think happened? They shit the bet on a fourth down conversion and gave Tom Brady a chance to fulfill another goddamn narrative. One that's been hated by most of the NFL world for decades. Catch made to the end zone! Cyril Grayson! Big shock, Brady pulled out another goddamn miracle because he shits on the Jets like his morning Tom. Le'Veon Bell, of all people, gets his revenge against the team that caught him. These are the only important things that happened in this game. Nothing else occurred. Nothing whatsoever. Do you like punting, folks? This game had all of that and more in spades. I personally argue this is an alarming revelation for the Bills since they can't do anything against the Jets. And how banged up they've been on defense all year? I guess you could say that at least they ended up winning in the end? Even then, it took way too long for them to get to full speed. When they eventually did, all was fine, but this isn't a good look against the red-headed stepchild of the division. As advertised earlier, all that was involved for most of the contest was endless punting. Punting as far as the eye could see. Making things very uneasy for Bill's Mafia. Fortunately, Josh Allen carried the team on his back again, so they avoid humiliation. And successfully secure the AFC East for the second consecutive year. Before continued success, all you can hope is that their defense is as otherworldly as it was today. You can't hold every single team to five net yards passing. Not every QB you face will be Zach Wilson. This has been a season. So many twists and turns that it's hard to conceive with the naked eye. If you were looking at this year seriously, it was absolutely exhausting. But do you know the true bounty to cherish? The memes. It was fucking gold for this economy. Thanks to incredible collapses, fantastic comebacks, Urban Meyer's coaching tenure, and whatever the fuck Antonio Brown did in the Jets game. Sometimes you have to stop and wonder if Joe Namath made a deal with unsavory characters to win Super Bowl III. How else can you explain all the horrific misfortunes that have befallen the Jets franchise since then? You could tell they were done before the season even started thanks to all of the injuries accrued on defense. Once the games began, the typical Jetsing that has become so commonplace these days. Sloppy play, a defense that defends as well as a twig against a raging waterfall, and an offense existing to see Zach Wilson get destroyed nearly every chance they got. You can't really gauge Wilson since everything was so fucked from the word go. He was running for his life most times he was under center. All you need to say was that their main highlight was a journeyman QB and Mike motherfucking White. He should have been given more chances. 
That guy was a fucking legend and he was screwed by benchings and COVID. Now, I feel that the Jets organization is trying everything they can to get on the right track, but I fear they're running out of time. All you can hope for if you're a fan? Stay healthy and make some semblance of progress. Anything to let them see greener pastures again.